everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed this tile backsplash behind my stove. And I tried to keep it as simple as possible by choosing a tile size and layout that didn't require any cuts and by using as few tools as possible. So if you're thinking of doing something similar, I hope this is helpful. As you can see, I've looked at a lot of different tiles and I think this might be one of the hardest parts of the project is just figuring out which one to use. Something else to keep in mind when deciding between ceramic and glass tiles is that ceramic are supposed to be a lot easier to cut and glass a lot trickier. Of course, another big decision is how you want to put the tiles on the wall, horizontally, vertically, diagonally, alternating patterns, you name it. In the end, I decided to go with a vertical pattern to keep it simple. This way, I don't have to cut any of these glass tiles and 10 of them should fit across the microwave quite nicely. Just a quick note, if you do decide to work with glass tiles, they do seem to scratch each other quite easily. So at the store, I made sure to get ones that had been protected by cardboard. Of course, behind a stove can be a pretty greasy area. So I'm gonna wipe down this area with some cleaner to help the tile adhesive stick better to the wall. For this first part of the process, you'll need your transition profile, your tiles, tile adhesive, tile spacers, a putty knife, a notched trowel, a hacksaw, a level, and some nitrile gloves. So a quick note on notch trowels. These come with different types of notches. These are triangular, they are also square, and ones that are rounded. And they also come with different depths. And this is about a quarter of an inch, which I understand is about the minimum I'd want to use for this project. Generally, the bigger your tile is, the deeper you want the notch. This just happens to be the trowel I had on hand, and from my understanding, it's not as critical for wall-mounted tiles like this. If you want a nice clean edge for the area of your tiles, you can get a transition profile like this. So I did these bathroom tiles previously, and I really wish I had used that metal transition piece to do this edge. These come in different materials and colors and shapes and allow you to butt your tiles right up to the edge. And that way you wouldn't see the tile adhesive or maybe even some of the mortar from the side. So let's go cut this. Whatever material your transition profile is made out of, you're undoubtedly going to be able to cut it with just a hacksaw. If you have ends of this that are going to be hidden like mine are behind the stove, then it's not so crucial how clean the cut is. But if your ends are going to be visible, you might want to use a miter box or even a miter saw to make sure you get really straight cuts. So before I start putting this stuff in, let's make sure that it's all going to fit. So that is 30 and three quarters of an inch. So this is 30 and a quarter. So it's half an inch wider. I'm trying to decide that that bothers me. That means it'll go to about there, which I don't think that bothers me. Oh, and I start putting this stuff up. So that's gonna go like that. And I did grab this level just to make sure. And that looks really good. Now I'm gonna use some tile adhesive to get this set there. And one of these little tubs is supposed to be good for 10 to 12 square feet of coverage. Maybe I'll tell I don't do this for a living. <laughs> I think I need to get a bit thicker. Let's make sure to get it level. <sighs> Definitely make sure to open some windows. This stuff is stinky. I went and grabbed a small scraper because I think that's going to be a lot easier to at least get it on the wall with this. Now you can use that jagged edge to scrape a little texture on there. Well, let's place our first tile. So I don't think I want to be touching the microwave, so I'm going to put one of these spacers up there. That's pretty satisfying already. So the process from here is pretty straightforward. Basically, I would put some tile adhesive on the wall for about two tiles at a time, then go over it with the notch trowel. Next, I would put a thin layer of adhesive on the back of the tile, which is called back buttering, then press the tile into position. Then I'd put a couple spacers between any adjacent tiles and push the new tile firmly against them. So a couple notes on this. I think I was putting a pretty thin layer of adhesive on the wall, but between that and the back buttering, the tiles felt like they were adhering really well. And wall tiling does not require as much mortar or adhesive compared to floor tiling since it's not being walked upon. Also, my wall was quite smooth, 
but if you had a bumpier wall, you'd probably need to apply more adhesive. What you don't want is to put so much adhesive that when you push the tile into position, it squeezes out each side and in between the tiles where the grout should go. Of course, you also don't want too little adhesive. As for the notch trowel, uh, technically it's better to have the adhesive ridges running parallel to the short side of your tiles so air can escape more easily. This would be more critical if I were doing floor tiles. Some of the tiles would creep down the wall a little and I would simply push them back up. For the last column, make sure to put your transition profile into its approximate position before you place your last tiles. Once you put those last tiles in, you can push the transition profile firmly against them. If you ask me, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to let that set up overnight. All right, a bit of a sneak peek of what it's going to look like. All right, it's the next day, and so I'm going to take out all these little spacers, clean off the tile, and then put in the grout. For this next part of the process, you want to have your grout, a bucket to mix it in, a putty knife to mix it, a grout float, a grout sponge, some nitrile gloves, and a mask. If you were doing much larger areas of tile, you might want to mix the grout with a drill and a mixer. Okay, there's a 1 to 1.1 US quartz, I guess for this whole bag. I don't want to do the whole bag though. Here on the side is a little table that tells you how many square feet of tile you can cover with this bag of grout depending on the size of the tile and the width of your grout. And unfortunately they don't have three by nine tiles in here. They have two by two and then six by 24. So they'll be somewhere in there, somewhere between 39 and 125 square feet. So I really don't need much of this bag at all. This stuff is really fine. I'm gonna do just over a cup. So I'm gonna mix it in this bucket. And then I added water until I got a paste or nearly peanut butter-like consistency. So I'm using this grout float, and I'm just going to reach in there and grab some and start working it in. Another big choice in this project is what color grout to use. At the store, there are so many different colors, and I just went with white. Working on a wall, I think it's a bit more finicky, trying to fill in all the gaps with grout. So this might take a bit of time. Once I thought I had enough grout, I then tried to remove the excess grout with arc-like motions. Try not to go parallel with any of the lines. As it's starting to dry, you can really see the haziness appear. So it's been about 15 minutes, and now I'm gonna use this damp sponge to lightly go over the surface. And you wanna use a big sponge because you don't want to accidentally gouge into all the grout you just put in. I'm gonna go rinse this off and just do it again. So at this point, I've taken off what I can with the sponge, and we'll just have to let this dry some more. And this stuff should just be thin enough to be able to buff off later. This grout can dry in three hours, but I just waited until the next morning and used a damp rag to buff off the haze of grout that remained on the tiles. So depending on the grout you bought, you may or may not need sealer. This one does not require it. If you do need to seal your grout, you can buy a little bottle of grout sealer just like this and follow the instructions on the back. So overall, this was a pretty affordable project. All the materials came in at about $130, with about half of it being just for the tiles. And if you don't have some of the tile-specific tools already, like the grout float, the grout sponge, and the trowel, those would only cost about 25 bucks total. So that's it for this project, but I do have quite a few things I'm working on for the front of my house to help improve this curb appeal, so I hope to see you around later. Thanks! Hey, I'm Dan, and my mom and I bought some land out in the countryside to build a house. And to help with that, we thought we should have a trailer. So why not renovate a 1949 Spartan Manor? So if you want to see how these go, plus some other random DIY stuff, subscribe and follow along.